Welcome back to That Dad Guy. It's January 14th, 2023. Today we're having freezing rain outside. So yesterday we started with snow, then it warmed up to 10 degrees and turned to rain, and then it dropped down in temperature at night and continued to rain but turned to freezing rain. So everything is kind of a sheet of ice outside. All uh, events kind of have been cancelled. So my son uh, was originally going to have a, a basketball tournament that's been cancelled. Uh, he picked up some roughing shifts. Those have been cancelled now. Uh, so normally we'd go and do some grocery shopping and uh, run some errands outside. I think we're going to avoid doing that today. We'll stay inside, do uh, the inside errands we need to do, cleaning up a bit, maybe do some baking, watch some TV. Yeah, keep it low key, but inside nice and safe. So that's the plan anyways. So I figured I'd better start with my video and uh, you guys came through. You guys uh, left me some questions. So I've got a variety of topics to answer here. Pretty happy about it. Um, some of them pretty challenging questions too. So let's get to the first question here on part 49. So the first one I have uh, came from Basil and uh, he gave an explanation of uh, last week's video and uh, buying stamps versus uh, sticker postage. And uh, his question is why stamps? Well, he's a, a stamp collector. So it's kind of a uh, put out there question for everyone else. Uh, why stamps in, in my household? Uh, as you probably know, if you've been following the channel, my father's an, an avid stamp collector, has been for a number of years. And uh, when I was little, I would uh, do stamps with him, whether it was uh, soaking off the back of a paper and doing that process with him, flipping through the books that he had organized, um, uh, collecting uh, first day covers myself, going down to the, the local post office and picking things up. So I got an early passion for stamps as well. Now, as I got older, it became more about filling in some of the gaps for my father for uh, birthday presents, things like that. So when I was living in Vancouver, there were some really nice stamp shops close by. So I used to take lists of the, the numbers of stamps that he was missing and go into the stamp shops and try to fill in some of those uh, Canadian gaps that he had. I know he collected worldwide, but uh, the best I could do was trying to complete as much of his Canadian collection there are still many gaps in that collection um, because some of those older stamps were very very expensive and I didn't have the funds to do it but I was happy to help participate and then as uh, we moved back here and got closer to my family again and helping out um, once again I was helping buying uh, his collector albums each year at the end of the year as Christmas presents for him um, working at uh, Canada Post uh, gave me a renewed uh, sense for stamps again and um, now really I, I'm, I'm taking on the mantle for him you can see his stamp collection back there and all the binders and um, inside the hutch here I have stamps that people have sent me and uh, stamps that I need to uh, soak off the backs of too and uh, prepare them and eventually try to find them a way to get them into the albums in the order that he has done it with the Scott numbers so that's why stamps all right thanks Basil all right uh, Okay, next one comes from uh, Smokey in uh, the United States, and he says, I really enjoyed the story about the stamps. I think that uh, you, did, you received all those wonderful stamps versus boring labels. So he's referring once again to the package that I had received from my brother-in-law. Um, so it had all the stamps. So if you haven't seen that video, go back to uh, part 48 and watch it. I said, do you find... Uh, in your work in Canada Post, that there are other people who prefer to buy stamps versus the postal label. Um, I'm going to say yes, other Canadian uh, Canada Post employees are stamp collectors. I have run into a few of them now, um, just talking about it. As far as who likes to get labels versus who likes to get stamps, that's probably a better question for a postal clerk. Um, as I'm, I'm a deliverer, I don't really see who buys stamps versus uh, the, uh, the stickers, but I know when I have gone into the postal office and talked to uh, other postal clerks and things like that, I have found other collectors. So there are lots of people out there that are, are still collecting stamps. I do think for the most part, from the demographics that I've talked to, collecting stamps is an older generational thing. Um, so my parents for sure, um, or my father for sure, that his age group were stamp collectors. Uh, my age group, I think there are some, and uh, those that are following the channel certainly are some of those people in my age group that are uh, collecting stamps. 
the next generation down, I don't think it's a problem, at least not here. There are probably some, and I'm not going to discredit those that are out there. There are probably some that are out there doing it. But I think uh, stamp collecting, for the most part, is an older, if I can put myself in that uh, demographic, an older uh, hobby. All right. So thank you, Smokey. Hopefully that answered that question. All right. Wendy from Canada has said, do you have any airport disaster stories? So we're switching from stamps, we're going to airports, and that's the great thing I love about these questions, is that can be on any topic, so we can be switching all over the place. Airport disaster stories, well, I've never been in like a, a plane crash, I've never had any of that. I have been in, um, um, you know, delays. Uh, what I, most recent, I would say, is that uh, we were flying to uh, Florida a few years back now, and uh, I left on a different flight than my wife and kids, uh, just because of the way that our point system worked and uh, how we uh, paid for the tickets. So I ended up flying up um, on a little earlier flight, I think, but I went straight to Toronto, and uh, they had a flight that was leaving later, but was going through Montreal and then into Toronto. And uh, I got to Toronto, and they were supposed to arrive within like, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half from when I got there and their flight got delayed on their end and got rerouted, got cancelled and so they ended up didn't coming till about seven hours later. So meanwhile I was stuck in the airport waiting for them the seven hours which um, missed both of our connecting flights so we ended up having to spend the night in a hotel there that the airline paid for um, and then uh, carrying on the next day but the problem with when I stayed on because I was on a different flight. My bag got separated from the lot of the rest of the family. So when we all got to Florida, um, my luggage wasn't there. So I had to wait another day before my luggage actually showed up. So that it's not really a disaster, but certainly an inconvenience in the trip when you're starting off. Uh, you want to have all your luggage and uh, be ready when you get there. Um, yeah, so we've had delays that way. We've had uh, planes that we get to a spot and planes have been cancelled and then you get to the next one and now they're overbooked so we've had delays that way in traveling um no real disasters though so thank goodness for that all right thanks wendy uh the next question i have is another one from basil in india he says what's what is ideal weather to you mm. ideal weather to me would probably be about 24 26 degrees so sunny outside, um, just not too hot, but not too cold. Something that I can be in shorts and a t-shirt in. Uh, that's nice ideal weather for me. Uh, I don't really want the snow and the ice and uh, it might look nice on the ground, but it's certainly hard to get around. And uh, if you're in a sunny climate, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Uh, the downside to the, some of the sun, sunnier climates Elsewhere, like I think, oh, I want to go to California. They have sun all the time. Yeah, but they also have wildfires and earthquakes. And um, they look at Florida and uh, that southern part of the United States. Uh, you know, they, they're having hurricanes. And those, I don't want the, that part of it. I just want the warm. So uh, the Caribbean, you go in there. Um, or the Caribbean, depending on how you say it. Um, they seem to have... A trade-off so you get nice weather but you're also going to get uh, torrential rains and uh, hurricanes and tsunamis and things that might wipe you out so i don't want any of that so that's what's perfect about canada is that uh, we get all sorts of climates we get all sorts of uh, weather and when it gets to the summer it's beautiful here uh, you know we get 30 we get 40 degree uh, uh, weather sometimes so it gets hot but there's also really nice fall days and spring days and yeah, so that's ideal weather. It's probably around 24, 26 degrees, nice and sunny. Uh, next question he had was, when was the last time your family enjoyed ideal weather together? Yeah, last summer. We had beautiful weather here. It was nice. He says, what is ideal weather for Polo? Well, Polo is an African hedgehog, so he really likes hot weather. Um, he's only been outside twice. We've taken him out. Uh, he really enjoyed walking around in the grass and getting all the smells and things like that. But it was a nice warm day when we took him out. And that's really the only time he wants it. He, he sleeps under a heat lamp upstairs. Uh, he likes to be cuddled into blankets. Uh, he wants to stay as warm as possible. So ideal for him is staying warm, staying dry. All right. Thanks, Basil. All right. Um, Amber in the States says, how old is Polo? 
And do you have any other pets? So Polo is a year and five months. His birthday is in July. So last July he turned a year. And uh, do we have any other pets? We do not. So uh, the last pet we had before Polo was uh, Paige, our dog. Uh, she was a Weimariner. Um, we lost her, unfortunately, uh, to a heart disease after about five years. And uh, then we had three years where we had no pets. And my family always have been saying, you know, can we have this? Can we have that? Can we get another dog? Um, I've taken it very hard uh, losing Paige um, and uh, some of the other animals we've had along the way too. We had another dog before that, Darwin, uh, before the kids uh, that we lost at an early age as well from cancer. And uh, so you get really attached to your pets and I find it's really hard when they, they leave you, especially when they leave you early. Um, so my daughter came home, she was working at a pet store and she said, what about a hedgehog? I said, what about a hedgehog? <laughs> I said no to everything else. He said, well, they only live about five years, um, so short lifespan. Uh, there's not a lot of maintenance to them, not a lot you have to do. And uh, so I had said, you know, you pay for everything, we'll do that. Because she was getting ready to leave for university when we got Polo. And uh, I was thinking, well, the pet's not going with you to university. That's not a, a right place for a pet to be. So it means once again, we're gonna be with the pet. And I didn't want an animal too that was gonna hinder our, our movement. Um, with a dog, you need to find a sitter if you're going to go away for any length of time. Um, you need someone that's going to walk him. And I, we didn't really have that infrastructure in place for that. And I didn't want to be housebound again. So, um, you know, you go off to someone's house for the evening and you got to think, oh, no, we got to get home because we're going to take the dog out and do things. Um, so that's re really why I didn't want to get back into pets. Uh, I, mean, I also didn't want to get back into pets for the hardship it is when you lose them. But I do understand the love that they do give the family. Um, Polo is a different kind of pet that way because yes, he'll cuddle a little bit, but he really wants to be left alone. Yeah, I mean, he's good for a short period of time, but you're not gonna go, he's not gonna chase a ball. He's not gonna call when you call his name, um, those sort of things. So I know my son is uh, would really love to have another dog uh, for that reason, but he's a couple away from, years away from uh, graduating from high school too. So for right now, Polo is the only pet we have. So thank you, Amber. All right, my next question comes from Michelle in England, and she says, do you have a car tax in Canada? So immediately when I thought of this, I was thinking, man, no, we don't have a car tax, because I knew in the UK, uh, you have to pay a rate every year, and uh, there's discounts you can get if you're a fuel-friendly or an EV car, um, uh, if you have disabilities, there's all sorts of different uh, reductions, but every year, if you're a car owner, you have to pay some sort of a tax. So I was thinking, no, we don't have that. Because we don't have that, um, we do have, if you buy a car, you have to pay sales tax on it. So there is a tax for that, I guess, that uh, like anything. But if I was to buy uh, a t-shirt, I've got to pay goods and sales tax on that as well. It's different in every province, um, how much that uh, tax is going to be because it's provincial. So here in New Brunswick, we have what's called a harmonized sales tax. It's 15%. So when we buy... Um, clothing or cars or whatever we have to pay an additional 15 percent for that but it's a one-time thing you don't have to pay that every year um, but it's expensive you buy a car for twenty thousand dollars and you have to pay an additional 15 percent in sales tax on top of that then that's ex well, more right so uh, we do have that there is a you know part of your car tax i think in england includes highways and things like that um, and so we do have um, tax we have tax on everything, but there is a tax that's built into our gas prices as well. So when we go to fuel up, um, the rate of gasoline right now is, I think, around $1.53 a liter. And uh, so that is inflated because inside that $1.53 is a tax that helps go to pay for all the roads and bridges and things like that for infrastructure. I know not all places do that. And so... If you were to buy fuel in the U.S., for example, uh, lots of Canadians love, if they're close to the border, love to go across the border and buy fuel there because it's cheaper. They don't have that inflated tax within it. So do we have a car tax? Not like yours, but we do have taxes associated to having a vehicle. All right, thanks, Michelle. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, my last question comes from Lila in the U.S. And she says, why do you think you are so close to your parents? And what is one of your favorite childhood memories? Why do I think I'm close as in proximity? Um, 
where I live compared to where they live um, or close as in a relationship status. If it's a relationship status, I don't know. They've, they were good parents. They, were, they are good parents. Um, they've always been there when I needed them. Um, I've never had any hardships with having parents like them. So, uh, yeah, I have a good, strong relationship back and forth why I live close to them. Uh, I grew up in this city. I have uh, moved away a couple times to go to work or to, to start a family, to have adventures. But uh, when I was raising my family, we came back here because my wife and I are both from this area. So our parents are from this, still in this area. So we came back to be there. And uh, as my parents age, uh, I've taken on some more responsibility with them as uh, my sister has as well. Um, but it's only right. That's what they did for us. And so that's what we do for them as well. So that's, I guess, why I'm close to my parents, proximity wise and relationship wise. And I said, what is your favorite childhood memory? childhood memory about my parents or about I don't know that's an open-ended question um, I don't know I have lots of great memories I have great memories about getting on my bicycle and just going exploring the city uh, that's what you did as a, as a child back then um, your parents basically opened the door and you were left to go out as long as you came back for supper uh, so had adventures that way uh, whether it was driving down to the post office on my bicycle or maybe going to one of my baseball games on my bicycle I loved hanging out with uh, my friend Troy and I used to explore all the woods and things around and so we found all sorts of things we found some salamanders that we brought home in uh, a big oil bucket we found near his uh, grandparents house uh, so there's a, a inter interesting me memory we had I don't know, I had a pretty good childhood, I think. Uh, I spent lots of time at camp and had great camp memories and great camp friends that uh, I still have some of those uh, friends today, like Johnny. Um, so, you know, uh, those are great memories and the, the adventures we had at camp, like, a big part of my summers. Yeah, and as far as family memories, whether it's Christmas morning and the adventures we got into there, um, or uh, family trips. Uh, we had some great trips where we went and stayed in bed and breakfast in Maine and New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, my, my dad loved to stay at bed and breakfast that had places that had, you know, goats or animals around that we could go and hang out with. So we had some of those uh, spots along the way too. I don't know, lots of great memories, I guess. So thank you, Lila. Hopefully those answer your, your questions and everybody else's questions. I love that there was a variety of topics this week and can't wait to see what you guys leave me for questions for next week. Um, yeah, it's like exploring the inside of my head every time about uh, answering some of these questions. Some of them are lighthearted, some of them are heavy, uh, heavy questions that I got to try to unpack. So thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great weekend and uh, don't forget to leave your comments and questions for next week. Have a magical week. Like Polo? You say like, subscribe, share, and tell all your friends. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs>